to eat, you're in the right place. This is the Eat Fluencer Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Maggie Landis. Together, we are going to unpack everything about eating and discover the what, when, and how that will let you lead your best life. This is not your doctor's conversation about nutrition. Today is when you can start to love eating again. Let food be food and you be you. Get ready to get eat fluenced. Hello there, friends. Welcome back to the Eat Fluencer podcast. I'm your host, Maggie Landis. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're new, I'm a physician, now turned nutritionist, turned health coach, and I work with women who are exasperated with the chronic dieting culture, and I work with them to make mindset adjustments that are necessary to live more contently with food in their lives, heal their relationship to their bodies, and we do all this through an undieted approach to eating. So that's that's my shtick, um, but I'm glad you're here. You're listening to episode 12. This is called The Gift of Trusting Your Body. So if you're in real time, it's December 23rd, uh, just a hair before Christmas in the year 2020. So I wanted a relevant you know, seasonal message to give you today, but I didn't want this just to be floof um, because we still have so much to learn out of this year that has been just a year. Um, You know, right now you're probably uh, hopefully doing some Christmas things. Maybe you're baking, wrapping, you know, going on a short car trip, hopefully not too much traveling since we are still in the throes of a COVID pandemic. But, um, If you're listening to this at a different time, stick with me. I am going to use some Christmas analogies just to make this fun and make it stick today, but this is a relevant and timeless conversation whenever you are listening. So I know that um, this may be the wrong time to go deep and philosophical. It's like the 17th month of the year now, and we have about you know, four neurons still firing and this may just blow the whole circuit. Um, but that's okay. If this is beyond your bandwidth this minute, it's okay. You know, mark it, come back, listen later. This conversation is relevant and good anytime because trusting our bodies is really at the cornerstone of being able to move out of diet culture and understand that we have the autonomy of eating and our bodies work. Um, They just work. So let's start with this. Let me ask you a question. Do you trust your body? And when I say that, I mean, do you trust how it works? Do you trust its value? Do you trust what it does for you? You know, what would be your answer? Yes or no? So I went and looked up the word trust because to me, you know, trust is one of those things that, um, you know, it's like we all know what it means, but we don't really know what it means. It's hard to, you know, give a definition if somebody really um, puts you to it. But what, what it says in the dictionary is that trust is a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. So when I say that in the sense of talking about your body, let's look back in, at that question again. Do you trust your body? Do you trust your body in the sense of, do you have a belief that it is reliable, truthful, highly capable, and strong? Hmm. That might change your answer, huh? Well, let's, let's just chew on that for a second. We're going to get back to that towards the end of the podcast. So first, I want to talk for a second about Christmas so that I can make this really spectacular Christmas analogy that hopefully will stick in your brains. But, you know, to me, part of the part of the magic or the wonder of Christmas is believing that something awesome can and will happen, even if you don't know how and you don't know what it is. Is that not true? Is that not a little bit of what you think about Christmas? No matter how you celebrate or how you sort of get to know the holiday, um, having some level of concern about something and then 
having faith and getting proof that it's okay and there's a plan. That's really the story of Christmas. If you're a um, a believer and a Bible reader, and I by no means am a am a scholar in this, but you know the first Christmas, Jesus's big birthday party. Uh, really, this is the message in that story too, and. To be honest, once you get to know the circumstances beyond the the pretty manger and the North Star and all this sort of thing, the, the real hero of the Christmas story in the Bible is probably Joseph. He had every reason, all the motivation in the world to make the first Christmas like the biggest downer in all of written history, like really, truly. He was, you know, in a... Um, very upstanding lineage, committed to a pregnant girl that was carrying not his child. And that's a lot to handle in the first century. Uh, But he was told by angels it would be okay. I mean, think about how crazy that must have seemed to him. But he had this maximum amount of trust in the situation. And he stuck it out and things worked out. And they did, right? That's the story of Christmas. Um, Even modern Christmas. And I'll give you the opportunity here. If you have little ears listening, I'm going to mention a couple things about Mr. North Pole himself. So if you need to turn this off, I'll give you a moment and you can come back to it uh, later when you're by yourself. But, you know, modern Christmas, it's the same thing. We have we have Santa, right? And the whole concept of Santa is that great things happen when you least expect it. In fact, when you don't understand it, it's even more impressive and magical. And there's this this element of disbelief and trust all kind of twisted together. And they seem very oppositional, but really they, they completely coexist. And when the disbelief and awe and incomprehensibility is sort of bound in trust. You know, we lean into the trust that when you're a little kid, Christmas will happen. Uh, Santa will come through. Uh, You know, sometimes there's more joy than what we even understood to anticipate in the first place. When I was a kid, that was, those were the best Christmas gifts. The ones, um, you know, that either I really wanted and I wasn't sure it was going to be possible or the ones that I hadn't even thought of, you know, those are probably honestly the even better. I didn't even know that I didn't have a love for something, but when somebody else saw that in me and gave me a gift that was picked out for me that I hadn't even anticipated and it made me feel valued and understood and seen you know, dreaming big, and then the joy of seeing it happen. And at this time of year, we all, we kind of know that we're connected. And it's it's not about Santa Claus and the presents and that sort of thing, but you do know that the, the message of generosity and sacrifice is amplified in our culture this time of year. Um, Many people attach a much deeper meaning to Christmas because of these underlying values that we've projected onto it. I mean, it's just a calendar, but it's a mark in the calendar. And there's, there's actually some evidence that Jesus probably wasn't even born in December, but uh, you know, this is when we celebrate. And so we've framed it uh, with this, these characteristics And, uh, you know, it's very cultural to attach this level of sentimentality and meaning. And I don't always agree with this. I mean, you hear people saying how holidays are, quote, harder, you know, for people who are missing loved ones, who have lost a relative, who have a military deployment, who are suffering with an illness, you know, who are going through a divorce, you know. And to be honest, I've gone through several of those circumstances and, those are tough situations, whether it's December or July. Um, but, you know, you hear it all the time. Our culture talks about, oh, it's so sad that they're not going to be home for Christmas or we're not going to be together for Christmas. We um, we just attach this meaning to it. Uh, we also, you know, people experience a little more 
um, motion to gratitude. You know, we give gifts to our teachers and our UPS drivers and our people who cut our hair and things. And, you know, they, they deserve our thanks and our respect all the year round. But this Christmas season just pulls something out of us that provokes this emotional response. And it's okay. I'm not, I'm not bashing that. I, I participate in that just like everybody else in our culture. Um, you know, my point is that trust is not meant to be neutral. It's not meant to be devoid of feeling. In fact, the actual act of trusting, especially when you don't know the end, you don't understand and you can't see past the, you know, the future, that is the epitome of hope, optimism, progress, and joy. That is is the gift. So let me go back to my original question. All right. Do you trust your body? Do you have a firm belief that it's reliable, truthful, able, capable, and strong? You know, do you believe that it has your best interest in mind, that it has true and pure motives? Do you have faith in the fact that your body will continue showing up for you all the times you need it to every minute of the day, whether you understand it or not? Do you know that it wants to succeed and endure and carries this ability to be efficient and operational despite you, not because of you? Do you see where your body has continued to serve you in many situations where you didn't support and honor it and it had strength to keep going, even when you doubted it, even when you, um, were, were negative towards it. So now what's your answer? Do you yes or no trust your body? Well, if you're a yes person and you mean it, you really, really mean it. I think that is great. You are halfway there. All right. Um, but why aren't you letting the full capacity of your body come to fruition? Why can't you really lean into that? Yes. If you're answering, yes, I trust my body and you mean it, you shouldn't have this compulsion to micromanage it. If you trust it, you don't need diets. You don't need some BS supplements and detox program. You don't need a, somebody else to give you a plan. In fact, if you trust that your body knows what it's doing, wants to be healthy, is capable, strong, and reliable, even more than you, you know, health is the, your, your body wants to do this. I promise your health is the most comfortable, lowest stress, least energy sucking state for your body to be in. And it wants to be in a state of health. It is trying every single one of you, no matter what size, shape, condition your body is in now, it is trying to be healthy either with you or without you. So why are we so invested in diet culture as a way to override that built-in wisdom to try to change our bodies, shrink our bodies, morph our bodies you know, at somebody else's command, we're giving the power to the, the doctor, the dietitian, the plan, the trainer, the person on the internet, you know, and we're, we're basically shunning that reliability and trust in our body and, and giving the reins to somebody that we are essentially claiming is better. So you've got to stop obsessing with how it works and just let it be. Your body wants to work for you. You're, you're not nurturing a relationship of trust when you constantly question, micromanage and override it. All right. I mean, think about this. Like I, I trust my spouse, but it wouldn't seem like I did if every day I read his email and, you know, looked on his Facebook account and checked his bank card. I mean, I guess he wouldn't mind if I did that because I really do believe he has nothing to hide, but that's not a trusting relationship. I'm not building trust by doubting. So, 
you know, what you're doing when you doubt your body and doubt your body's ability to give you uh, hunger signals and satiety signals and, and to digest food and to, to tell you what and when to eat, you're um, really degrading that relationship. You know, if you're, you are not smarter than human physiology, you're just not. And I'm not either. It, no, neither is anybody else. And the first person who tells you that they are, you should not give them $1 because they cannot do it better. The human body is beyond our independent creation. But at some point, you have to just trust it or you don't trust it, right? So that sounds really pushy of me to say that to you. Um, but if you trust your body and you're answering, yes, I trust my body, then act like it. All right. If, if you're not sure you can do that, you might need to reconsider your answer. And maybe you're actually a, no, I don't trust my body in, in that group. So let me speak to the no people for just a second here. If, if my question, do you trust your body? The answer is no. Well, why not? And, you know, you can answer your own question. I don't have your answer, but uh, here's some things you might be thinking is, well, no, I don't trust it. It's failed me. It doesn't work the way I want it to. It doesn't look like it's supposed to. It's not the same as it used to be. It's not the same or as, quote, good as somebody else's. So in all those situations, you know, again, the thoughts you're having are about are conditional thoughts. Those thoughts are yours, not the body. The body is a thing. The body, you know, body is neutral. The body is a group of cells that you better believe is doing nothing all day long except trying to keep you alive. That's what it does. That's its singular focus. So you're projecting the meaning, emotion, expectation, the competition, all of this onto it. The same way that we project all the meaning of Christmas onto the month of December and onto December 25th. It's just a calendar. It's just a day. But for us as a culture, it means something different. And in the same way, your body is just like Christmas. It's, it's just a group of cells trying to keep you alive. But we have it so tangled up in meaning and emotion and all these uh, external values that we bathe it in, bathe ourselves in, um, that becomes our reality. Now that's okay. And that's normal. Once all those thoughts and feelings are layered on and have been layered on for years and years and years, it really does become our reality and it drives our behavior very strongly. But my point my point in all of this is that your body exists as it is today. It is what it is. It, your expectations, your comparison, your misunderstanding, your arbitrary benchmarks to your body in times past or whatever, those have nothing to do with how it functions today. So, you know, it's a choice how you you know, project meaning onto it. it. That's a choice. That is a willful choice. So, so let me just tell you this. I am, um, a divorced, um, uh, and I'm remarried now, but my children, um, are with their dad this Christmas. And I don't love the fact that that's what divorced families do is they only have their kids every other holiday and that sort of thing. So, you know, but my calendar says December 25th, just like yours. And, it's just a little white square, just like December 17th, just like March 23rd, just like August 6th. All right. Now I can play into all that superimposed meaning that we all went through this, this huge mega projection of Christmas. And yes, I'll be disappointed and sad and lonely and resentful and all the feelings. But if, if in my head, I can just separate that it's just a day it's just a day on the calendar. It's neutral. What I really want to experience with my kids at Christmas is a day where we can have fun and feel connected and we're not working and we experience that 
generosity and wonder and disbelief and, and just, you know, fill, fill each other up with those connections that are made only in family, then I'm going to trust that I can have those feelings with or without December 25th. You know, we're going to have Christmas. It's not going to be on December 25th. And I can separate this negative, um, projection that I could easily pick up and just leave it because I trust that I can get the feeling I want on another day. All right. It might be December 29th. It might be December 30th. I don't know what day it'll be, but that doesn't even matter what day it was. Okay. So do you want to feel motivated, confident, encouraged, strong, and, you know, trusting? Then you, you can trust your body. You can do that. It has nothing to do with what it looks like, what it has done for you or to you in the past, what somebody else's body does. It's, you know, your body may be December, the December 29th and not the December 25th. It doesn't matter. It's just a body. So where's this going? All right. What I'm trying to tell you is that this is the missing piece. The gift you need this Christmas that you didn't even know existed, didn't even know that you didn't have, did, you know, something that's going to make you seen value and worth and, and be seen, trust, trust in your body. That's what you need to give yourself. So what does that look like? Well, you can... Reread all the questions that I asked you, you know, a little earlier, you know, replay those in your head. Do you, do you believe that your body has your best interest in mind and that it has pure motives? Do you have faith in the fact that it's going to continue showing up all the times you need it to? Do you know that your body wants to succeed and wants to be efficient and operational, whether or not you understand it? Do you see where your body has served you even when you didn't support it or honor it and continued to be strong and keep going even when you had negative thoughts and doubt about it? So it's up to you how positive or negative or neutral you feel about it. But the fact is the body is neutral and the body is on your side no matter what. That's just biology. It does not matter what size, shape, disease, age, you know, personal baggage you have. Um, I'm, I'm saying this very philosophically, but it's a scientific fact. Your body works and can be trusted every single one of you. So this week, you know, exhale a little bit. Your thoughts are very powerful. And as we move forward with this journey out of diet culture, as we work through all these you know, sort of mind shifts, we have to first trust our body so that we can work with it. We can have a productive relationship and that we can promote health in each other. And that's your physical body, your emotional body, your spiritual body, your, your many things beyond what you see in a mirror with your eyeballs. So this week, this is, this is your gift to yourself. This is like the big gift is trust your body. All right. The stocking stuffer is just try to let go a little bit of that intense grip that you have on your relationship with food. Trust that your body has got your best interest in mind and your body wants a better relationship with food and that, you know, trust that it's possible to start doing this no matter where you're starting from, what your dieting history is, what your body looks like. These answers are going to be found in your mind, not in, in diet culture, not in a meal plan, not in a trainer, not in a, uh, you know, trainer's office. So this is, this is my personal mission is to coach women in this space where they can enjoy food, make peace with their bodies and find contentment in their health. And that's all aspects of their health. Health is way beyond your clinical, you know, physical health. There's so much more to it and it's being completely, um, 
you know, sidelined by diet culture. I, I really feel so strongly about this. I know you can probably hear it in my voice. I, uh, I never do anything like this. My January group coaching, uh, which starts on January 4th, the enrollment, uh, closed last week, but I'm willing to open just a couple more spots to some listeners. If you have been motivated uh, by this or any of my other podcasts and did not realize that there was an opportunity to join, I just, I don't want you to feel like there's nothing you can do. I want you to take real inspired action and advocate for yourself and for your own health because you deserve it. You are capable of doing it. And I want to help you. So, so please email me at hello at maggielandismd.com or send me a direct message on uh, Facebook or Instagram. I'm at Maggie Landis MD. Um, and let me know if you want one of these last minute reserve spots for the January 4th, uh, start and you want to get in and do the work now. Um, you're worth it. I hope you have a safe, happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Give yourself the gift of trust this week and this season. All right. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk again next week. Thank you so much for being here today. If you love what you've learned, follow me on social media at Maggie Landis MD and you'll never miss a thing. You can also check out my website at MaggieLandisMD.com and sign up to be part of our community of eaters. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll talk again soon.